That could actually be in the hole. Well, get everyone and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video where today, as promised, we're doing a whole lot more product reviews and today I have the brand new Seed SD01, which is the Gen 3 model of this ball. I've reviewed it in the past and it was very impressive, so I'm super interested on how it's gonna to go today. Anyway, I have already taken this ball on course. So I've gone and put it through its paces on course. I'm also about to jump in the simulator and get some simulator numbers here for you guys. I'm gonna mix all of that for you into this video so slap a like for that but right now let's get into it and let's talk about it all right guys so i am in the coaching section here i'm actually just going to blow up this on screen for you guys in the range give you a bit of a different view but pretty much i'm going to be hitting a 56 degree wedge i'm going to hit maybe five or six really good crisp shots get some numbers get some spin numbers with these balls and then we're going to go into a seven iron and talk about the on course stuff from there as well That was nice, really good start. That was better. A little pushy actually. Hmm. I thought I actually hit that one better. See, maybe that might be part of the conversation in terms of the uh, shot dispersion, but we can talk about that as we go. Yeah, it's just, it is, sometimes it does dive a little right off the club face and I think what that comes down to is that it's not sticking on the grooves like what I'm used to with it with the premium ball. But you know what, let's, let's give it a little bit. It can be me as well. That one started a little right. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. Dispersion wise, uh, that's a 56 degree wedge. So not gonna say I'm a million percent thrilled with that but again that can come down to me that can come down to operator error depending on the type of you know shot that I'm playing and the type of day it also does seem to be going quite long so there that is a 56 degree wedge and we're saying 97 meters a carry I'd be interested to see these spin numbers because I felt like I did hit them all really quite well Spin does seem down. There's one lower spinning one there, 6,000. I'll get rid of that. 8,500 on a full 56. It's not too bad, but it's not exactly low. Oh, sorry, not exactly high. All right, so that brings me to the first part of the encore stuff, which is off the tee. A very important part of golf for me. If I don't have a ball that I have confidence with off the tee or that I don't like, and one of my biggest pet peeves with balls is when they are short. Okay, this ball off the tee, not a short ball. We're gonna run some clips of some shots that I hit. Really pleased with how it performed with the driver, also the three wood and also the irons. That's big. Perfect. It's right next to the pin. So I hit some great shots there, hit some bomb drives, I hit a really nice three wood. The ball flight that I got from it was good. It was actually a little bit higher than what I'm used to, which is not a bad thing, just different, also good. Um, and then that iron shot that I hit into the green, really good, that was a really close tap in birdie. So super impressed with it off the tee. Nothing really that I could complain about there. I think that it performed as a premium ball should perform. I've got seven iron now. I guess what I should say is what I'm looking for. So really what I was looking for in a sandwich is around about that 9,000, 9,500 spin. Didn't quite get there on this one. Could have been strikes, maybe. Now what I'm looking for in a 7.9 is around about 122, 123 miles per hour ball speed and about 160 to 165 meters of carry, okay? They're my carry numbers and what I'm looking for. So let's see if we get them. Hit that one good. Pulley though. One nineteen point six. I'm not going to say I absolutely flush that, but I didn't hit it that bad, and we're a little, little underneath where I want to be. They do have the thinnest cover in golf. They've got the thinnest urethane cover in golf, even thinner than a Pro V1. Hmm. Again, I don't feel like I'm hitting it that bad, and I'm just not quite getting the ball speed out of it. 157 carry, that's 
It's a bit short, but let's see if it's a, a common theme. I hit that good. Still got 121, I really flushed that too. Smash the same 1.33 though. Which is interesting because what happens is if I'm over compressing a ball, the smash factor is going to go down. When you're compressing the ball the right amount, that's when your smash factor goes up. So oftentimes when I go into, you know, do fittings and stuff like that, I do have to take that into account. But if you're going to be using these balls on course, to me, it's probably saying that I'm losing distance because I'm over compressing the ball. Okay. I literally can't hit a ball better than that. Like that's about as flushed as I can flush one. And it's 163. So we've got five good shots there. And let's just check the numbers on those to see how that's run through. Okay, we've got a real low spinner on top, 4,449. So I'll just delete that one. Then we're sitting at around about five and a half thousand spin, which is where I like it. Uh, ball speed about 121 with those last two, so that's good, that's a positive, and carry on 160, so it has ticked those boxes there. Um, in terms of a performing ball, I guess you can't really ask for much more than that. These go at about 35 pounds, um, which I believe is around about 50 Australian dollars. However, we do have one major drawback and downside with these balls at the moment, and that is the shipping cost. You've got to pay another 35 pounds at the moment for shipping. There are some other options that Seed have as well, which you know you can get replenished every month and all that sort of thing, but the shipping cost makes these balls very expensive for Aussies and, and maybe for other countries around the world as well. If you're closer and you don't have to pay that kind of shipping, then they're going to be more viable, but for us, they're literally going to be more expensive than a Chrome Soft X, which is probably not good, and I don't think that at the moment that's going to speak you know, positively to a lot of people here in Australia, but maybe abroad because they are a good performing ball. Anyway, next point, let's jump into approach. 138, so this is not a pin that I normally go to on here, so it's always good to throw something different up. But 138 meters, I'm gonna run through some of the shots that I hit as approach shots on course. I was really pleased with this. I was really pleased with the ball flights that I got. I was really pleased with the way that it reacted on the greens. It had some really good stop and drop with those shots from about 160, with those shots from about 150. And overall, I was impressed with the way that the ball performed. Now we're going to see if we can do it here. It's a pretty good start. And pretty much right on my 9-iron number. So I should have said it before I started. My 9-iron number on course with the Chrome Soft X balls that I use is 140 meters. By the way, if you see my back sweating, not that I want to highlight it, but it is a furnace in here. It is so hot right now, so slap a like for that. Dedication to this. Hmm, it's gone a bit far. I think I probably just hit up on that one a little bit. I think that's why I didn't quite compress it. That's left, but I smashed it. Absolutely ripped that. Okay. It's a bit of a low spinner though, so I am going to say that these balls for me don't feel like high spinning balls, which to be honest for my style of play and the way that I play the game is not a bad thing. Although I do struggle to add spin to the ball, which is why I use a Chrome Soft X because I feel like the ball does that for me. That's nice. But again, 6,700 spin, I'm hitting that half a club further than what I'm sort of wanting to hit it. So, something that I can talk about here without hitting some shots for a moment, because it is hot, is the putting. The putting I really did, the putting took a little bit to get used to, I've got to be honest, because the ball 
is a soft ball. It's definitely hot off the face, so they're trying to get that ball speed number up off the drivers and things like that, which I didn't have a problem with on course. And I can't hit driver in here, but the distances that I got off the driver were very good. I think the trade-off to that, and this is where the premium balls come into play, is that when you're putting with it, it does seem like it's hot off the putter face as well. It's a little too springy for my liking, and as much as I think that they are a great all-round ball, and you can definitely get used to that with your putter, I just did blast a couple pass because again, I'm not used to that springy feel. But you can get used to it after a few holes. I started rolling it a lot better. I was able to gauge the putts a lot better, but it did take a bit for me to get used to. And it's worth noting. All right, so let's get a bit of a wedge in our hands because we're gonna talk short game, okay? 115. It's not a bad strike. So that's a full 52 and we've got 8,178 spin. So again, full 52, normally I'm, I'm looking around about that 9,000 number and about 110 carry. So it's gone 116, a little less spin. I don't know if that's good or bad. It would just be something to definitely get used to. Okay. Again, that eight and a half thousand sort of mark, which is a little better. So. The short game. In and around the greens, I didn't think it was that bad. I think, again, it's just not the highest spinning ball, but it does spin. So it's not to say that it doesn't spin, it definitely does spin, but I'm just used to a little bit more grab, a little bit more, you know, rip and stop when I'm hitting it into greens. So some things like some little short chips that, um, kind of popped off the wedge face again with just that hotter thing off the putter, just popped off the wedge face a little bit, didn't sort of grip and spin as much. Um, but there are times as well, like straight out of the bunkers, I'm gonna roll these clips now, where they did definitely spin and did have that stop and grip, which I was super impressed and super pleased with. And again, it's something that you can get used to. That could actually be in the hole. Get in the hole. That's a good shot. So something to note as well is with spin, I think it's, it's more of a personal preference than opposed to exactly where should you be because I'm definitely gaining more distance with a gap wedge right now using this ball compared to a Chrome Soft X, which I just know goes 110 meters with a gap wedge because it spins at about nine to nine and a half thousand. So that's what I've gotten used to. However, if I did want to get a few extra meters out of my gap wedge, then I could do that potentially by moving to this kind of a ball. Oh, that's a thin. And that's true to character. When you thin a ball, often you'll get a little bit more spin and that's bang on 110. So what did I say? 9,000, about 110. They're my numbers with my Chrome Soft X and that's pretty much exactly what we just saw then. In summary, these balls are actually really, really good balls. And if you're in a region where you can play these balls and save yourself some money, then you're gonna get a fantastic deal. You're gonna get great performance out of these balls. Um, I didn't see any problems whatsoever with durability. I felt like that was really good compared to everything else that I use. Um, I felt like the spin around the greens, you can definitely get used to. The speed off the putter was different for me, but again, you can get used to that too. Performance off the driver was really good. The only thing that kind of, for me, which was like, uh, I don't know if I really like that is again, just I felt like sometimes when it got a little bit more side spin, you definitely lost them a little bit more left and a little bit more right. And that's where I think the forgiveness factor of the premium balls comes in is that those balls are so straight that it really does help your game. The next thing, which is the biggest downside for us Aussies, unfortunately, I don't know about the rest of the world, but the shipping costs, it just makes the balls too expensive. Um, the balls are not expensive in their own right. They're 35 pounds, which is a very good range for ball. If we only had to pay that 35 bucks, it's $50 for a box of balls. You're getting a really good box of balls, but when you gotta pay the shipping cost, which is just as much as the balls, on top, you either need to buy like 10 boxes to make it worth it, or you just go down to your local shop and you buy, and you buy some Chrome Soft Texas, you know? Like, that's just pretty much where it's at. But guys, this is my review. If you like that, please, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. There's a whole lot more coming. And also, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I get back to every single one. Where do I rate these balls out of 10? I'd have to say a strong seven. So a strong seven, I think that they performed really, really well. Just a few things that, that would edge them up if they increased those or, or made them better, which they have since their first generation. So I'm sure with more generations to come, they're just gonna get better and better. So 
Check them out and I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.